Good morning. It's good to see everyone. Glad that you're here. If you would turn your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 1, I started uh, working on a series of lessons from 1 Peter, and this verse sort of stopped me in my tracks, so to speak. Um, Verse 2 of 1 Peter chapter 1, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, that you may obey Jesus Christ. Does yours say that? And I thought, obedience is pretty important. Do you believe that? It's not a real popular Belief. It would be uh, better, people think, if they would just do whatever they want. Somewhere on this planet, there's a three year old boy who has a newborn sister. And His mother was occupied with his young newborn sister and could not get up to make him be obedient. He was pretty obedient before that time. And I just happened to notice on FaceTime that he had her over a barrel, so to speak. I mean... He was running around doing things off camera and uh, she's trying to get him. Mom is trying to get him to do what she says to do. But he knows now that she has baby sister to take care of. And so I don't know what he did, but he did something. But we all like to do what we want to do, don't we? We would say we get a little taste of freedom. Nobody's telling me what to do. But then there are days that I really want God to tell me exactly what to do. There are days that I feel like I want to put God in a box. And then days I want God to put me in a box. So as I'm reading, as I'm, I'm, I'm studying First Peter, this idea of obedience just kept jumping off the page at me. So I thought, okay, let's talk about this. Let's think about this. Um, Obedience is something that is learned. Is that true or false? Uh, Children learn to obey their parents or they don't. And you see, we get to see the results of that, right? In uh, places like Walmart and different places. Jesus learned obedience, right? Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8. So obedience is something that really is celebrated at baptism, at our our baptism. It's allowing Christ or saying or um, wanting him to be our master and our Lord. We're going to be obedient to him. And that's something that's celebrated Even Jesus was obedient to the Father. And the scriptures on that, I won't turn to the, uh, this scripture, but Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. He was baptized to fulfill all righteousness. Did Jesus need to be baptized for the forgiveness of his sins? No. No. But it was to fulfill all righteousness or what is right in the Father's eyes. That's what he did. Philippians chapter 2 verse 8, Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. So Jesus shows us how to live our lives on this planet. So God expects obedience as we walk in him, as we walk in Christ, throughout our walk in in Christ. Galatians chapter 5 verse 7. Paul 
writes this, the Apostle Paul. Now, he's one that was not obedient to Jesus. You remember uh, there was an occasion, though, that he became obedient to Christ. You remember Jesus saying to him, it's hard. It's hard to kick against the goads. Right. And that goad would be that pointed stick that they would stick the oxen just right above the hoof in that tender area. Oh, it's so tender there. And the ox says, I'm not moving. Oh, watch this, buddy. <laughs> and, and, the, and the ox moves. You know. And Jesus is saying, it's hard to kick against that. It hurts, doesn't it? I mean, so it kind of gives you the idea that Jesus was trying to move him along maybe for a little while. But he finally did. And so Paul, Saul becomes a believer in Jesus. He's baptized, I'm assuming, by Ananias. And his sins are washed away. He has this new life. And, and, but now, as things have moved along in his obedience to Christ, Paul, this apostle, is one that is writing these letters, as we know, to the uh, the churches in Galatia, Galatians chapter five, verse seven. You were running well, he says to the church um, who cut in on you and kept you from obeying the truth. What happened? Something took place here that, that just sort of tripped you up and, and, and kept you from o obeying the truth. In Galatians chapter one, verses six through ten. He says, I'm astonished that you're so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which really is no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert, pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let him be eternally condemned. So we've already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let him be eternally condemned. Am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. So what Paul is saying is I'm being obedient that one that was saying to me, it's hard when you kick against the, the goad. That's difficult, isn't it? I'm, I am all in with him. I'm being obedient. Does, is that something that stops at baptism or is that something that continues? Is it something that we continue to learn? It sort of stretches us and helps us. As, so I think Paul would say, yes, yes. So the most important thing to please God we need to obey Christ. We need to obey Jesus Christ. John chapter 3, verse 36. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life. For the wrath of God remains on him. It's important to obey Jesus. And it's not that um, God is out to get us. That he is seeking to harm us. That's not the intent of God. He sends Jesus so that we can be saved. That's his intent from the very beginning in the Garden of Eden. You go search that place out and you'll find where God said, I'm going to send someone. And basically, he's going to end you as he's looking at the serpent, as he's thinking of Satan, the devil. He's going to put an end to all of this. And so the scripture in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, that we started out with, says, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and the sprinkling by his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. So. Paul starts out or Peter starts out his letter talking about how important it is and what God wants from us. Obedience to Jesus. And so he wants us to obey, obey his word. John says that he is the word, that Jesus is the word. We understand that um, from 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. 
that we are to obey the word. For it, for it is time for judgment to begin. That's what Peter says with the family of God. And if it begins with us. What will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? So there's the obedience again. We're to obey this. Again, in our world, maybe in every society. Not a real popular thing to talk about. Obedience. You need to obey. Human beings tend to push away from that idea. But I think it's good for us to think about what God is offering us. And you may say, well, I've been a Christian for X amount of years. I mean, 40 plus years, 50 years I've been a Christian. Okay. But we still need to obey, right? We still need to. And it's not this that just that you obeyed once and you stopped obeying, right? I remember my dad telling me to do something when I was a teenager. And I did not want to do it. And that didn't go so well for me. And now I know it didn't go so well for him either. Because I'm a dad. I'm a grandfather. You know, as you were getting a spanking, this hurts me more than it. No, are you kidding me? But as a parent, now you start to realize, okay. Yeah. When my dad asked me to do something the last time I saw him, I couldn't wait to do it. I was excited that he asked me to do something for him. And so I did it. I don't even remember what it was. But I didn't I didn't try to find ways to get around it. Or to get away from it. What happened? Same son, same father. Our relationship is deepened, right? I love him more. I love him now. <laughs> Maybe I should say that. And this is the way it is with our relationship with God through Jesus. We love him more because we see what he's doing. We see he's not trying to hurt us. He's not trying to harm us. He's not trying to make our life difficult. He's not trying to throw a monkey wrench into things. He's not he's not trying to to trip us up or or. Paul says to the Galatians, what happened? I mean, you were doing such a good job. You were running well. And then somebody came in and it just tripped you all up. Keep your focus on, on God. Keep your focus on Christ. Romans chapter one. We'll talk about Romans. We'll have a study going. Uh, started last Sunday night on Romans. We'll continue that tonight. And we'll talk a little bit about this particular passage, Romans chapter one, verses 18 through 32. I won't read all of this, but the gist of it is this. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. See, it's not that God is out to get us. It's that he doesn't want the truth suppressed. He wants the truth to be out there so that we can see it. And when people with their through their wickedness, through their uh, their godlessness, suppress the truth. Hide the truth, cloak the truth. God doesn't like that. Because he wants us to see the truth and know the truth. He wants the world to know the truth. Verse 21, although they knew God. They neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. And then verse 29, 
They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips and slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. Solomon would say, there's nothing new under the sun. These folks would say, oh yeah, watch this. Well, it's not really anything new. But they're inventing ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. You see, there's no truth in that. There's no God in that. Romans chapter 2, verses 6 through 11. Verse 8 says, But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. Again, it's not that God is trying to hurt us or He wants to hurt us. It's that He does not want the truth suppressed. He wants people to have a fair shot at being obedient to Him without evil getting in the way. Without without wickedness throwing a monkey wrench into the, the works. God wants everything to be seen for what it is. So let's look at some examples of obedience. Just some examples quickly. From Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. That day... When evening came, he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. And the wind died down. And it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And they were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the winds, even the wind and the waves obey him. Obedience. Matthew chapter eight, verse 27. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So Mark chapter one, verse 27, the people were all so amazed that they asked each other, what is this? A new teaching with authority? He even he give he even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. Hmm. James two nineteen says, you believe that God is one good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. Matthew chapter 21, verse 19. Seeing the fig tree by the road, he went up to it and found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, may you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. In Mark chapter 11. The fig tree you cursed has withered. Peter said he remembered this verse 21 rabbi look the fig tree you curse has withered well of course it did he he told it to so luke chapter 19 verses 36 through 40 as he went along people spread their cloaks on the ground when he came near the place where the road goes down to the mount of olives the whole crowd 
of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles that they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Are you obedient to God? Are you obedient to his word? Are you obedient to Christ? I'm not asking you if you were at one time obedient. I'm asking you and I'm asking myself this right now, current day, right now, this moment. Are we obedient to him? Are we obedient to his word? We've seen that wind and waves and fig trees and rocks and even evil spirits obey. Why? Because Jesus told them. This is what's going to happen, and that's what happened. And some days I want it to be that way in my life. I want him just to tell me. Do this, and that's what I do. I have no other option, but I have options. Oh, boy, I have options, and so do you. Makes life so sweet, doesn't it? Uh, maybe. <laughs> All these options we have. But the only, fool, the only thing that's foolish enough to disobey God is mankind. We're the only ones that would be arrogant and foolish enough to say, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I, I, I read that. I'm not going to do that. But I, I, I read that. But that just seems like, well, maybe you misread it. Maybe you need some help seeing what God, because God's not wanting to kill you, right? Yeah, but it says in Scripture that God's wrath is coming. yes. Yes, that's because people in their wickedness suppress the truth. He wants the truth to be seen so you can obey it. That's what he wants. It's not out to get you. So do you need to obey him today? Are there areas in your life where you are not obedient to him? You might know of one or two, or maybe there's no areas. But you might be aware of some. So at this moment, we praise God for his word and his sacrifice of Jesus Christ for us so that we can obey. So that we can come to God through Jesus. He gives us something to obey. And so. I'm going to plead with you this morning to think about this, to be obedient. To God. If you've been waiting for some special time, forget that. The time's now. If you've been waiting until you get everything cleaned up in your life so that, you know, things would be better. God won't have so much to clean up. Are you kidding me? This is why he put Jesus on the cross. Everything that was against you nailed to the cross. Taken away. So that we can come to the Father through the Son and have our sins washed away. You can wash all you want. You're not getting the stain out. I have a shirt that's a perfectly good shirt. Except it has a stain right here. And it's a white shirt. So you can imagine I wear it all the time to special occasions and events. No. 
I still keep it. Why? I have a pair of dress pants that have a stain on them. I bush hogged the field wearing those dress pants. I felt like, uh, who was it from Green Acres? Uh, Eddie Arnold, uh, what was his name? In the, anyway. Oliver, I felt like Oliver on Green Acres, yeah. Just needed my, my hat. But, uh, you're not going to wash the stain out. Let, let God do that through Jesus, through the blood of the Son. Won't you let him today? I encourage you to not only be obedient, but I encourage you to encourage others to be obedient to Jesus Christ. And so this morning, if you do have a need, whatever that is, we want to help. We want to help. Maybe uh, you want us to pray with you. We would love to do that. Maybe this morning you are deciding you're all in and you're tired of like Saul being kicking against the goad. I mean, God's trying to get your attention. And maybe this morning is the morning for you that you're going to say, OK, enough of this, enough of this. I want to be free. I want to be clean. I want to be obedient to you. What do you say this morning? Won't you come as we stand and sing?